And now let's turn our gaze to the southern part of Africa, to the nation of Zimbabwe. Three weeks ago, the country saw an election. The incumbent, Emerson Mangagwa, won his second presidential term. It should be his second and last term in office. After all, Zimbabwe claims to have moved on from the past. It says the days of autocracy are over. But is that really the case? Nangagwa's new cabinet says otherwise. He's appointed his son and nephew to key government posts. His critics have raised the alarm. The opposition have accused him of nepotism, of planning to bring family rule to Zimbabwe, of bringing authoritarianism back to the country. Now, a little background here. Africa is no stranger to nepotism. You saw in the recent Gabon coup how the Bongo family was entrenched in the country. In Equatorial Guinea, the president's son is vice president. There are many examples of dynastic politics across the continent. And then there's Zimbabwe, a country with a history of authoritarianism. Before the current president's first term, Zimbabwe was ruled by one man for 37 years. His name was Robert Mugabe. He's the current president's old mentor. Mnangagwa served as Mugabe's regime, in Mugabe's regime, rather, in various positions, including as vice president. He became president after Zimbabwe's military replaced Mugabe in a coup. That was in 2017. At that time, there were promises of change and progress, despite the fact that same political party was in power. And Mugabe's right-hand man was given the charge. He won elections in 2018 and then again in 2023. Both were controversial. This year, observers from a South African regional bloc said the polls in Zimbabwe were not free or fair. The mission noted that some aspects of the harmonized elections fell short of the requirements of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, the Electoral Act, and the Sadiq principles and guidelines governing democratic elections. Observers from the European Union said the same thing. But Nangagwa returned to power nonetheless. You put all this together, and you can see why Zimbabwe's opposition is worried. Last week, the winner, this man, took the presidential oath again. And he has been courting controversy ever since. These pictures are from last Friday. That's the president overseeing a graduation ceremony and handing out an honorary doctorate to his wife. That's right, his wife. That's the first lady. She's now an honorary doctor of philosophy in law. And it's not her first honorary doctorate. Last December, she received a doctorate in development studies, again, an honorary doctorate. And both these certificates were conferred by her husband, the president. They're allegedly for her philanthropic work. Whatever the reason, this is not a great look. A president heaping awards on his wife. But it may still be better than what Zimbabwe's president did on Monday. He brought one of his sons to his cabinet. 34-year-old David Nangagwa is now Zimbabwe's deputy finance minister. He was sworn in yesterday. What experience does he have in governance? Well, none. He graduated with a law degree last week. Before that, he was an actuary. Do the qualifications make up for the lack of experience and obvious nepotism? Well, that's for the people of Zimbabwe to decide. Maybe look into who awarded those degrees to the president's son. And other than the president's son, the president's nephew also found a place in the cabinet. He's been made Zimbabwe's deputy tourism minister. This nephew is 45 years old. He's been involved in party politics for a while. So he's another loyalist in the president's cabinet, another member of the family. When you look at the rest of the cabinet, it's mostly the same from his first term. It includes ministers with a poor track record, like the sports minister. Kirsty Coventry, a former swimmer under whose tenure football left Zimbabwe high and dry. Last year, FIFA banned Zimbabwe for 18 months due to government interference in the country's football association. That doesn't really speak well about her term. But when questioned about the return, Zimbabwe's president had this to say. I am satisfied. I don't know who's satisfied. When you come president, you can move. 
He's also brought back a man called Kembo Mohadi as vice president, the man who had to resign because of a sex scandal in 2021. These appointments look murkier by the day. An opposition leader put out this message after Zimbabwe's cabinet was announced. She called it a toxic mix of illegitimacy, corruption, violence, nepotism, incompetence and sex scandals. Harsh words, but are they accurate? Will the president do anything to change this perception? Or will his focus be on propping up loyalists and paving the path for his children to take over Zimbabwe?